been 20 years since the Caracas World Parks Congress, and I think much positive um, advancement has been made with reg regard to marine conservation, and specifically the use of marine protected areas as a tool to conserve uh, marine areas. So it's uh, undeniable that there's been progress in terms of the awareness that's been raised about marine uh, in terms of the way that governments are treating their marine and coastal areas as important um, heritage and important resources to protect, I think that's undeniable. Uh, many, many countries now have marine protected area agencies like France. Uh, many countries have uh, marine resource management agencies that are as powerful as land and, you know, water resource agencies, so that's all very good. Lots of progress being made. Um, what I've noticed, though, in 20 years is that I'm hearing many of the same things being said today that were said 20 years ago. Um, there is still a problem, I believe, with the marine protected area community being very focused inward on itself and on the particular challenges of marine conservation. Um, there's always been a sense that uh, we have a difficult, challenging um, task ahead and uh, that the terrestrial people don't quite understand us well enough. So the marine people have always retreated kind of in amongst themselves to talk mostly to ourselves. So the, um, unfortunately, much of the dialogue about the need to conserve marine areas has stayed within the marine realm. So one thing that I think we need to do is we need to think about ways to mainstream our message, to really make it clear that our protection of marine environments and the ecosystems that provide all of the services that we rely on, that this is imperative for humans, not just for coastal communities, but for coastal nations and in fact for the planet as a whole that these concerns are very much driven by our loss of these ecosystem services, the things that nature does for us, that those values are being lost um, and that we really ought to be targeting our attention at areas that are threatened, I believe, and many of us believe, not necessarily at the most pristine areas, although these are important areas to raise awareness and to give people a sense of hope and wonder um, to make them connect with the ocean. That's very, very important. But in terms of allocating very um, scarce resources towards management of the oceans, I believe it should be done in places where areas are threatened, resources are overused. Um, secondarily, I really think this is true also for terrestrial parks as well as for marine parks that we really need to be engaged in broader dialogues about how we use nature and resources. That marine protected areas can't be established in a vacuum without considering marine spatial planning, without considering land use planning decisions, without considering how municipalities and states and provinces um, control access to um, and use of coastal and marine resources. The one thing I've noticed in addition to this kind of sense that we are still talking too much among ourselves and not enough to the broader world um, is that we really haven't made good connections with the people that are involved in watershed management, in controlling freshwater use, um, in uh, dealing with land use that inevitably affects the marine environment. It's still the marine community trying to make a, a voice for marine, for, for the oceans, uh, without effectively engaging our partners, which should be the people that deal with rivers, with streams, with uh, land use in watersheds, um, so that we can holistically address these ecosystems and we can really take what we call an ecosystem-based approach. So really protecting these living systems um, in a way that's efficient and effective. At that Impact 3, there was a lot of talk about um, reaching out, and in fact, you did have some, some new, <laughs> new faces, new institutions, um, so it was a good, you know, a good effort, I think, at reaching out. 
But really, you know, in many, many countries, including in France and in, including in all of Europe, countries are making decisions on allocating space, ocean space and coastal space to various industries. Those decisions are being made today. And we need to be very assertive about inserting the conservation message, the underlying basis for all economic growth has to be protection of nature, because we don't have growth without nature, as Sylvia said tonight. We don't have life without nature. Um, but, you know, more, more immediately, these processes are going on, these decisions are being made about resource use. And for marine protected area people to be marginalized and just talking among themselves and planning among themselves about where these protected areas should be without thinking about the broader context of all these maritime uses and maritime industries, uh, I think is a mistake. I think we need to insert ourselves into these processes as they're happening at the national level at the regional seas level, for instance, uh, the Mediterranean Action Plan, for instance, or other kinds of regional seas efforts um, at the global level to really make sure that marine conservation is the foundation upon which we grow, you know, uses of the marine environment.